After winning 16 straight fights from the start of his career, Ibiabuchi made a big jump in competition and fought undefeated prospect David Chua for the WBC International Heavyweight title on June 7, 1997. Chua had a 27-0 record and was considered the next Mike Tyson by several experts. Prior to the fight, Chua had scored devastating knockouts against future titleist John Ruiz and Daryl Wilson. Chua also beat David Aizan and future champion Oleg Maskaev to set up the fight with Abiyabuchi. Wilson tries a right hand across the top. Chua lands it. He gets the hand back up. Chua tries to finish. Takes a left on the hook. And another one. His eyes roll back in his head on that one. The sky up is out. Chua's winning streak has brought him to the edge of a title challenge. His record of knockout victories had established him as the man most likely to follow Lewis, Tyson, and Holyfield as one of the division's dominant forces. Standing in his way was the largely unknown Abiyabuchi, who had piled up 16 wins over mediocre opposition, but had never competed at the highest level. This was anticipated to be another simple victory for Chua on his path to greatness. Both boxers unleashed bombs the whole night, and neither took a step backward. There's that big sweeping right hand from David Chua. A big interesting to figure out in certain instances, and it's no secret that he should use the jet. Years of this heavyweight division. And Ike right back at him with a left right of his own. There's a short uppercut on the inside before Chua comes back with a left hook. Left hook of his own. Chua now opens up with a left hook, and Abiyabuchi returns. Right hand over the top. By the end of the battle, everyone had a good understanding of who Abiyabuchi was. In one of the greatest fast-paced heavyweight bouts with a record 1,730 punches thrown by both boxers, he was furious throughout, holding Chua and his strong hooks at bay with well-timed jabs and walking through any strikes that the New Zealander landed. This isn't to claim Chua didn't put on a good performance. He did better than his display against Maskei but he was overwhelmed on the day by the Nigerian in a fight that ranked both of them among the finest heavyweight fighters of their generation, if not the most durable. While Chua was not precisely disgraced, a first defeat was disappointing and set his career back somewhat. After losing to Abiyabuchi, Chua took on future champ Hasim Rahman and technical knocked out him in the 10th round. He throws that right hand on this recklessly. The victory over Robin marked the beginning of Tua's battle with his weight. He had swollen up to 253 pounds when he defeated Obed Sullivan in 2000 by KO. Later that year, he weighed 245 pounds in the loss to Lennox Lewis. Tua struggled in his fight as both boxers avoided each other and Tua failed to throw any significant combinations and was defeated by a large margin of points at the end of the fight. Following the Lewis loss, Tua recovered his confidence after a KO over Nicholson, but lost a tight decision to future champion Chris Bird in his following fight. David giving it his all right to the bell. In 2002, he demolished out Michael Moore in the first round with a tremendous shot that knocked Moore down cold. He gets in two body punches early. In March 2003, David Tua faced Raman for a second time. The fight was declared a draw after one judge scored it for Raman, a second for Tua, and a third had the score even. Tua's last fight was in November 2013, when, aged 40, he lost on points to giant Russian Alexander Ustinov. David finished his career with an 82.6% knockout to win ratio. He possessed powerful punch and an impressive highlight reel. However, because of his inability to adapt, he will be regarded as one of the finest competitors of his generation, rather than one of the greatest of all time.
Abiyabuchi, on the other hand, had emerged from nowhere as another major contender, and his victory over Tua was no coincidence. However, the signs soon appeared of the troubled man he was outside the ring. Shortly after the fight, he kidnapped his former girlfriend's 15-year-old son and crashed his car on an interstate in an apparent suicide attempt, badly injuring the kid. He got a 120-day prison term and was required to pay $500,000 in damages. He was out of the ring for 13 months before scoring a couple of wins and then crunching Bird, a future two-time heavyweight titleist with a devastating left hook and ending the fight just seconds later. Abiyabuchi's natural talent and potential inside the ring were eventually shadowed by mental instability and aggressive tendencies in his personal life, which sadly also marked the end of his professional boxing career after compiling an amazing record of 20-0 with 15 knockouts. Abiyabuchi's story is one of boxing's classic what-if scenarios. He possessed the physical features to become not just the world heavyweight champion, but also one of the all-time greats. His story is heartbreaking, both for the fighter and those who were harmed by his acts. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, press the like button and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any new video.